Welcome to Pure Finds, where four awesome guys talk about four awesome albums. Usually older stuff on vinyl, but we can go into modern stuff if we'd like. I'm your host, Chris Morrison. Ian Gebhardt. Cody Jewell. Kyle Bittner. Right on, and now we are off. This is the very first podcast, and you know we don't really know exactly what we're going to do, any format, but we definitely want to talk about these albums, uh, the great stuff, and we're thinking uh, maybe we should roll a die for who goes first, or maybe we should draw cards, or... You know, whatever, but we're actually going to go ahead with years. Uh, the year that the album came out, they will go first. Earlier, the better. Uh, so I think we have Cody with Wilson Pickett. Yeah, I got Wilson Pickett, The Wicked Pickett. It's recorded in 66 off oh. Atlantic Records. Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is my pure find. It's probably the coolest album I ever found. I was shopping up in Michigan at a uh, thrift shop. And I found an autographed copy of the Wicked Picket to some guy named Dave Thornton. It's weird. My dad's name is Dave, so it's kind of like a weirdo. Yeah, like, but uh, I'd always heard Wilson Pickett when I was growing up, you know, through my parents and shit. And I never, uh, I always liked him, but I didn't know a lot about him. What and, would I know from him? Uh, I've, never, I've never heard about him. What would I know? From uh, him? You'd probably know. <clears throat> Land of a Thousand Dances. It's a song that's like na 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 na. Yes. Na 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 na. Right? Yeah. That was the first one I ever heard by him. Yeah. He's awesome. I'm thinking hit the road. But when I came across this album, I hadn't heard really any of the songs on here, except the covers. There's like three or four covers he did. Which ones? Uh, there's quite a few actually. Um, yeah, right on. The first song is a cover. It's uh, called Mustang yeah, Sally. Yeah, and I'm just gonna say I, I on this yeah. one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's the one Ian pulled up when I was yeah. like, I've never heard of this God guy. God damn that song. <laughs> I mean, this guy? it's a great song, but you know, you go to any fucking venue around Fredericksburg and they're going to say they're gonna sing that fucking song. Any 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 clock out blues band is gonna. Say, gonna play that song it's like god damn it you know can't you guys come up with something a little bit better than that fucking song I, that's the only thing i gotta say about that record I, it's a it's great when wilson pickin does it it's yeah. great the first hundred billion times you hear it but yeah. jesus fuck you know don't go to a high school marching band show then on a friday night because <laughs> you'll hear it about a dozen times yeah. like why don't you go cover something good i'd actually be nice to hear the horn section do that at a you know in a college or oh, it's yeah. Thing it gets old though. Yeah, I'm sure. It yeah, does. now that I think about, it, I think my high school they used to play that shit like mm, every Friday really? night at the game. I'm not gonna lie, I have played that we get a, like, sound a few, of few that. dozen yeah. times <laughs> at football games. When you hear uh, UNC play that fucking shit, the only, thing, the only thing I've heard, like I remember hearing at the marching band stuff or any any type of football game during high school, was that the fight song. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> da, da, da. that nonsense. That's all I remember. Then the nice high schools the have the cannons out? going off. Jesus. <laughs> 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 when did Wilson Pickett cover that one? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, he didn't have cannons, but one cool gimmick they used to pull back in the day, back when uh, back when Wilson Pickett used to play like the Chitlin Circuit down in like uh, you know the Deep South, Louisiana. Oh yeah, and all that. that deep South. They used to do crazy shit to entertain the fans and stuff. And one time, well, one thing they used to do was uh, Wilson Pickett would pull out a gun <laughs> on his drummer. <laughs> and uh, he, I don't know if he would have ammo in it or not. I don't know if he'd fire off rounds. but I, th uh, I hope I, not. <laughs> no, nah, I mean, I think he'd be a total like, badass if he did. Right. No. Nah, yeah, legend. <laughs> I think he put blanks in it one time and he, like, he faked shooting his drummer and his drummer, like, killed over dead. And <laughs> people, ran, people ran out of the club. It was fucking crazy. Uh, yeah. I, I want to try to do that. That's how now. you do. Oh, try and do that shit now. See what <laughs> I know, right? Yeesh, you'll get four in the chest, two in the head. Wilson Pickett <laughs> had a crazy obsession with guns, too. He was, like, addicting to buying guns and stuff, and he actually got in trouble for <laughs> driving around with guns later on in his life. He uh, he became a hardcore alcoholic and shit, and uh, he accidentally killed somebody in a head-on collision, I think. And uh, what got him in even more trouble than manslaughter was that he had some unregistered guns in his <laughs> truck. He had like three guns or something. I don't know. I probably should have did my research. T.I. ain't got just shit like, on him. Yeah. <laughs> just fucking like, like, I'll tell you, that's just like. 
cops. <laughs> They'll just be like, oh my god, you've just taken somebody's life in this horrible car accident. What's that? <laughs> You're hiding something, aren't you? He played with Hendrix, too, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, Hendrix. Out of Ooh. all the people that he used to bounce around with and play with, Wilson Pickett was one of them. Did he, he ever had. like record with them? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, don't you have a record of, uh, of uh, A-side of Hendrix? or I think Hendrix is on the B-side, A-side, Pickett. I'm pretty sure I've seen it in your I collection. I think it's a 45, I think. I might have come across. I don't know. I, I'm not I just sure. Remember I'd have to go that, back. I remember and seeing look. the album. I mean, you have a fucking record store at your house, right. so I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, you, you should probably, uh, yeah. you know, make a little money off of the, some of the records right. you got. So. Yeah, I think so uh, take an inventory of what you yeah. got. <laughs> I really do. <laughs> I have so board. much <laughs> crap. I got a box full of 45, so I never even played. I just like looked at them one time and just put them away because I didn't know <laughs> most of them. I'll go through them with you. Jeez. Yeah, like, dude, oh, jeez, that's cool. I think I have too many. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, pretty colors. And back in the box. I have enough pure finds to keep this podcast going for years. <laughs> I just got a bunch. Like The biggest part of my collection is actually handed down to me from my old manager Hell yeah. who I worked with and everything, but he moved away and while I was helping him move and everything, he was just like, take these that's awesome it's nothing but like 80s metal and you know got some alice cooper you know just that's uh, cool i I remember like you're saying like there's some stuff i just haven't listened to yeah right almost all of rush (laughs) all the rush wow yeah you have all of rush (laughs) yes that's awesome yeah and i got some badass black sabbath in there i got a lot i'm just missing one now i just need that's Black cool. Sabbath's title album, and I'm straight, and that's it. My collection will be complete. That's like me with Zeppelin, dude. I only need like two more, and I got all of them. Yeah. And well, one of them is Kyle, so <laughs> I think <laughs> Tech See, see I, I sold out on the Led Zeppelin. I just got yeah. the box set. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it. You're There's like, too many. It. It's the, the, the <laughs> Beatles. The Beatles are the ones that's uh, slow coming. That, right. They're yeah. too expensive. <laughs> oh, over at uh, Fat Cats now, they have, uh, was it Magical Mystery Tour? Shout out to Fat Cats. In Fredericksburg. Yeah. Shout out to Fat Cats in Fredericksburg. Fat <laughs> Cats. Not that Mr. like how. Not giving us any uh, money for it. Not Howell but. the third. No, this guy is actually uh, he's a really cool guy. And um, if you ever need any kind of help with, uh, with you know. Getting Records, your, CDs, well, DVDs, <laughs> VHS, books, comics. Books, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, like, I walked in there. It's like, damn. They it's got like everything, Nancy Drew. Man. I got to say, man. He helped me out with, uh, he helped me out with uh, transferring my VHS to DVD. Oh, yeah. I'm a fucking, I'm a loser and I don't know how to do that myself. Oh, so. but that was your guy. Yeah, that's my guy. Wow. Well, he, he, you know, outsourced it, of course. But, I mean, he yeah. can help you out in a lot of ways. He's a really cool guy. Uh, but anyways what else is crazy too is all that inventory he pretty much knows what he has and what he doesn't have yeah. i was surprised he's got eight tracks <laughs> got <laughs> talking he's about got inventory of laser what discs. <laughs> um interesting enough though i saw a uh a beatles record it was one of those uh 1960 something to you know it was a greatest hits yeah. double record like there. the red, the blue. red and was, blue yeah and it was uh yeah and it was uh going for like you know closer in the upper 30 dollar marks you know but well, it's All not this too stuff's bad. in good condition. So. Like I spent on the White Album was like <clears throat> seventy, Damn. and I'm all, all I'm missing <laughs> yes. is the booklet. It's like it oh, has really? everything mm-hmm. else. It's authenticated. The I checked the serial number and all stuff. that stuff. It yep. has the portraits and everything. Yeah. Just missing the booklet. Oh man, that I don't remember if mine font. came with the book. Yeah. I, dude, when I got that, well, when my dad found that, it was a pure find. He found it for like five bucks or something, oh, wow. and then opened it up, and it had all the headshots in oh, it. I don't yeah. know if the booklet is in it or not. Yeah, I got all the headshots yeah. and stuff, just not the booklet. That's the right. one piece that is missing from the White Album. <laughs> mm. He's hanging up in the room. eBay, that, that shit yeah. probably cost just as much as a fucking record. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> probably, so... Yeah. Wilson Pickett, anything else? Yeah, I was about to say, yeah. like, what was... Uh, it got some songs on there that you haven't really covered. I, yeah. I kind of fucked you over. I was about to say, just... <laughs> it's it's all right, it's pretty <laughs> sour. Mustang, Mustang, Mustang Sally! Sally. <laughs> was that, that the Say Your Piece About It? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. We were talking about the, before the podcast. I was like, don't tell him. I'm going I'm to lay into that song. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways... I mean, I'll be honest, that's probably my least favorite song on the whole album. Like, what? I mean, it's a good song, but it is kind of overplayed. Well, I what, might what's, the, what's, what's the list? What's the list? Let's see, we got... Mustang Sally, uh, New Orleans. That's a pretty badass song. It's kind of like Land of a Thousand Dances. It's got those just drum breaks of him going, oh, yeah, give it yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Wilson Pickett shit. And then him screaming, Ow. ah! <laughs> He's got some right good on. screamers on here. Uh, Sonny, that's an awesome song. I don't know who did the original. I don't know if it was him or not, but his version is definitely the best. It's really bluesy. 
uh, Everybody Needs Somebody Love. That's a solemn solomon burke song uh okay that sounds familiar it's that uh the blues brothers are most known for it's the one's like i now need you 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 yeah, in the mouth yeah. yeah oh my lord <laughs> uh oop poop a do songs i like that i never i never really liked it because that's the one it. track that skips on this song it always Ooh. skips in the same spot so Ooh, i usually boop, skip boop, it boop, 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 <laughs> you know i wish it would <laughs> right <laughs> no i remember it's like at one part where it's like in your mind and then i'll just keep doing that in your mind <laughs> over <laughs> and that's over. like in your mind <laughs> yeah in your mind. <laughs> in your mind. <laughs> meditate on that yeah. Fuck you now. <laughs> yeah. um my favorite song is the last one on that side, Shank and a Do Right. That's a good bluesy one. Talking about a soulful woman. Yeah. That's a that's a good one. Hey uh, man. I'm gonna have to like give that a listen. Mind yeah. if I borrow that sometime? Yeah, sure, man. <laughs> right on. <laughs> I was like, I do want to listen to it now because it has na 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 I was like, I'd love to have that as one of my morning sounds. Well that song is not on here, but that song's <laughs> there's a song kinda like it. <laughs> okay. well, it's, it's Wilson Pickett. It's good. As long, yeah, right. <laughs> he, do, he doesn't want to borrow it now. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh, I'm not interested. <laughs> no, no I'll, I'll still, I'll, I'll give it a listen. If it's on vinyl, I'll give it a fucking listen. Right. Absolutely. Do it. Yeah, I mean, uh, that's that's pretty much it with this album. I love it. I'll never part with it, and that's my pure fight. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Right on. Uh. We're that's taking cool. a we're taking a time travel to 1970. Yeah, 70 was it July? You said July 1970. This is this is probably one of the coolest years for music, I think. Damn right. I agree because with that. Yeah. I was looking up some stuff and whew, I read a little bit about um, basically the transition from the awesome 60s of peace, love, everybody get along, and then December give me that 4th, dark shit. Yeah, I was about to say December 4th, Altamont. Festival, Rolling Stones <laughs> yeah, were playing. Oh God, they had um, yes. got violent. Oh. <laughs> well, I think his name was Meredith Hunter. Uh, gets stabbed and beaten to death by the Hell's Angels yeah. for running, trying to go up on stage with a revolver. Yeah, uh, the song played, I believe, was uh, "Sympathy for the Devil." Oh, uh, was the song when that gentleman got stabbed? Damn, that's crazy. That's absurd. Yeah, Rolling Stones were being inexpensive, so what do they do? They hire a local bike gang to uh, run security for them. And, you know, it's it's it's, it's not like, so what local is it? anymore. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> What did I hear about? I heard it was like um, like Woodstock of the the West kind of thing, where it's like you know babies yeah, were born, people were stabbed, and you know <laughs> bad stuff <Shit>. happened. Yeah. <laughs> There's peace and love over here, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what? But I was thinking about it, and I was like, with that concert, it was Rolling Stones. It was a festival. You add one bad element, and then just like that, the summer of love, everything is over and we go when we start getting welcome bands. to the dark side exactly it's like everything changes pretty much because we get the stooges came out that year uh i think the doors even released an album that year uh i think let it be even released in 1970 sounds familiar yeah and didn't and, zeppelin 2 come out in 70 uh yes yeah yes it did and it's like it's like that's when everything was like we Bring. went from peace and love, dude, to like actually the world's a fucking wicked place and you shouldn't listen to your teachers, motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's like that's that's how it went. You know? it's like it, and from regular uh, passive aggressive rebellion to like no, you're gonna grab him by the shirt and kind of like k- kiss him gently. All, all, the, all, all, all the English groups bringing back the blues rock to America. Yeah, yeah. basically. Yeah, English invasion. Yeah, there, that might the have been British invasion. Is that what that was? Ongo- <laughs> wait, no. Ongoing British invasion. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they won't the quit. <laughs> <laughs> they lost. They won't get over it. Um, <laughs> no, but <laughs> which so, time? America. So with the, so with the death of the '60s and the summer of love, with all with all that gone, we start seeing the Stooges. You know, everybody's music changes, and then this band comes out in January. They release their first album, Black Sabbath, as Black Sabbath, the band Black Sabbath with the album Black Sabbath. It's pretty tight because uh, after that was a, it wasn't a huge success, but it was still damn good. It got a lot of sales. So only a few months later, in July of 1970, they came out with another album, Paranoid. Uh, originally supposed to be called War Pigs. Every, like a, every Black Sabbath fan knows it, but I feel like I want to say it anyway. <laughs> it was supposed the album was supposed to be called War Pigs, but because of the Vietnam War and everything that happened in America. Uh, I guess the Limeys didn't want to piss off the Americans, so they were like, oh, we'll, we'll just call it Paranoid, mate. Uh, <laughs> that was kind of Australian. <laughs> <laughs> mate. We'll call it Paranoid, mate. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, okay, I'll try my best English accent. 
So the limes will probably get pissed off at the Americans and be like, well, yes, we shouldn't do that, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Was that better? That <laughs> <laughs> Good try. Yeah, get, get on with those war pigs. They were called paranoid. Yeah. It's because the album art does not match the name at all. Because <laughs> it's like, what does a guy with a sword and a helmet have to do with being paranoid? Uh, like, don't get don't us know. wrong. We love the people, the British people. They brought us a lot of good music. Oh, absolutely. And great tea and cute girls. Don't forget, though, we left for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we left for a reason. <laughs> but, I mean, Game of Thrones, man. Game of Thrones. <laughs> so, and this album is great. It just, it sculpted my vision of music. Um, beforehand, I was just into Kiss, and after realizing it's like, okay, this is like party rock, after years, it's like uh, Skip handed me Paranoid, this album, after we watched the movie Detroit Rock City, which was about a bunch of stoners going to see a Kiss, mo- or co- Kiss concert. So it was like, okay, that's kind of neat, and we uh, in that movie, they have Iron Man play. And that's what hooked Skip, and he bought the album. And then he was like, "Chris, you got to listen to these guys." He was, I was like, oh, "I got Kiss, bro. I'm, li- I'm listening to Rock and Roll Over. I don't need that shit." And he was basically, "No, dude, this will change you." And uh, I, we sat there in my room, and played, it, and it was never the same. If you, if I go down the dang song list, it's it's all the essential Black Sabbath. What was never the same? Yeah, my you, life. yeah, my life, everything. No, because if you go down the song list, it's and you're a Sabbath, and you know Sabbath at least, it's all the essentials. You have War Pigs, Paranoid, Planet Caravan, Iron Man, Electric Funeral, my personal favorite, Hand of Doom, Rat Salad, and Fairies Wear Boots. It's like a greatest hits song. <laughs> yes, it's like, it's like, it, it came is. out as a greatest hits. <laughs> all those <laughs> albums you can listen to from front to back, and then yeah. you can just yep. turn it right back on to the front and yep. listen mm-hmm. to it all over again. I love yeah. those records. Yeah. And then you know, after, it's kind of funny because we watched. Like, Skip watched Detroit Rock City, and that's what led me to Sabbath. And then I just went and saw Sabbath in Detroit. (laughs) So I was like, it kind of all ties in, and it felt right. With Skip. Yeah, with Skip. With Skip. You know what? It felt like it was like a 16 year journey, I swear (laughs) to God. But uh, it finally happened. (laughs) I absolutely love this album. It was uh, produced by a guy named, I think, Roger Bain. Bain. Yeah, Roger Bain, and he, this guy, I tried to look him up, and there was no information on him. He basically did Paranoid, uh, maybe a Judas Priest, Priest album, uh, I think it's Rockarola. Uh, he did that album, and then after that, he disappeared from history, because <laughs> Judas Priest was like, dude, you suck. <laughs> and Lex, I was like, no, you're all right, man. Because <laughs> uh, actually, on that album, on Paranoid, they've recorded most of those live. And that's something that none of the producers would really allow at the time. Oh, wow. So all of Paranoid was live? Yes. No shit. Yeah, he let them record live. And it was just kind of different from what everybody's used to. So I can I can get it if he didn't have a job long after that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, well, fuck this guy. You know? So, and that's uh, that's basically it for the parent for Paranoid. I mean, I love it so much. And... Uh, Trying to think of something else really cool to talk about. I think the coolest thing about Paranoid is the actual title song was written in about five minutes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and pretty much recorded in, what, ten minutes? Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> they recorded in ten minutes. They recorded it for a single, right? Is that yes. what they did for they were, it? Yeah. Uh, Paranoid and Electric Funeral. That's right. A side, B side. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it was going to be, and it turned out being. But like I said, it originated as War Pigs and. It's that's just one of the most iconic songs ever for rock and roll. Yeah, man. I think that album changed a lot of people's lives. It changed my life. Like I used to listen to that constantly in high school. Like absolutely, all the time through (laughs) every class. Oh yeah, because it's like that surge. You know, especially at that age. Mm -hmm. You know, being in your early teens and shit. Yeah, it's got it feels right because you're getting out of that bubblegum era, Mm -hmm. and it's like, man, life's getting harder, and I have all these weird feelings, (laughs) and I'm pissed off. Yeah, pissed (laughs) off. And then you hear music that's just like, it's okay to be pissed yeah. off. You should be pissed off, We're dude. pissed off, too. Like, I should be pissed funniest, off. The funniest part, uh, the, or at least the irony of the of the album, is um, Hand of Doom, where Ozzy's talking about, you know, you fool, you're sticking needles in your arm and doing these yeah, drugs. Right. And all the while, he's doing all these drugs. They were all doing it. You know, you look at him now, you know, you don't blame it all on the drugs. I mean, the guy fucked himself up many times, but, uh, but yeah. just the fact that he's... 
that he's shaking all shook up yeah. from all the drugs that he's done, and, and yet he's over here telling people, oh, you've... You're a fool for doing the drugs, yeah. man. It's it's like, like, <laughs> what an idiot over there doing cocaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I really, uh, I really love um, the setup there. Uh, the drummer was, um, I don't know his name by... Bill Rock Ward. Bill Ward. Ward. Yeah, yeah not, not your typical uh, metal drummer, you know. He was more of a jazz-style drummer. Yeah. And, uh, I think that's why he fits so well with him. It, it's really cool. Yeah. And, and then you got, you know, you got Tony Iommi, the, the metal, and, and then you got... Someone who, um, you know, uh, Geezer Butler, someone who doesn't really uh, get a whole lot of credit unless you're listening to Alice Cooper <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> at night. Yeah. Uh, which, you know. That's Fredericksburg exclusive. <laughs> <But> anyways. Uh, <laughs> 96.9. Yeah. Yeah. 96.9. The yeah, Rock. Yeah. We are in Fredericksburg. But, uh, but yeah, um, Geezer Butler actually helped write some of these lyrics. You yes. Know, and, and he that, was uh, primarily the writer. Yeah. yeah. And that, yeah. that, to me, I think is really cool. Kind of yeah, gets don't brushed know that. under the rug, you know, Aussie. Yeah. You know, Aussie's the man. But, <laughs> but no, yeah. Geezer's, Geezer's badass and uh, is actually one of my uh, biggest inspirations as a bass player. Yes, I play bass. Right on. So. Yeah, we got Kyle. He's a bass player and like a new singer-songwriter yeah. now because he started playing yeah, guitar yeah. and writing stuff. <laughs> Cody's been playing guitar like... Forever, he's a singer songwriter <laughs> too. <laughs> Shoot, Kyle and Cody were both in a band, Psychedelic Kool Aid. If anybody remembers that era, boop, boop, <laughs> <Fred Spring> exclusive. <laughs> 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 like I'm not inputting that into anything. Yeah. <laughs> not on this podcast. <laughs> 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 so we're all musicians yeah, here. So absolutely, and as musicians, we can absolutely appreciate that most of the songs on this album, the instrumentation was all sparked from on stage jams when it's just like, hey, let's fuck around for a minute. Right. <laughs> and that's how they came up with most of the rhythms. And I think that's really cool. Hell yeah. That's how it works. <laughs> that's, how the, that's how the best songs are written most of the time. Absolutely. Yeah. So, from July 1970, we are time traveling, 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 traveling. August. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In a world. <laughs> August. See, I feel bad because, like, you know, I actually <laughs> just checked this out real quick, but it was actually recorded in March. Oh, so oh. we had actually skipped. But it was so released now we have to travel in August. <laughs> oh, oh, released. Okay. Yeah, so oh. recorded on, right on March 27th and 28th, 1970, at the Fillmore East in New York. So this is a live concert. Yeah, I had to choose the hard one and go live because mine's got the whole long list of, you know, <laughs> Compilations of everybody. Everybody involved. <laughs> yeah. involved in Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and the Englishman album. Awesome album. We've all listened to it. Absolutely. Yep, yep. Freaking yep. great. You know, you got Leon Russell, phenomenal piano player, who was basically the band leader for the whole tour. Yeah, you tell me like how fast they got everything together. Yeah. I really I really do want to hear that now because it's like I can put this into perspective now. Mm -hmm. Like my, mine's going to be a little long-winded here because, I mean, it, it's honestly everything that you would basically need to know is from the little liner notes on the inside of the vinyl. Buckle your fucking belt. <laughs> other than, you know, all of them having amazing nicknames. Yeah. Other than Joe Cocker. Joe Cocker doesn't have a nickname in the album, which... The cock. <laughs> <laughs> the cock. No. It's, it's, but anyways, you know, it's an it, it, extraordinary group of people... <laughs> That all had nicknames and stuff, you know. It's like you got Leon Russell, who's master of space and time. Uh, just random people here. Let's see who else we got. Jim Price, The Price Is Right. <laughs> uh, I'm trying to find a good one here. Oh, here we go. Denny Cordell, Lunar Tea Cake Snake Man. <laughs> yeah, I don't think drugs were involved. <laughs> no, no, drugs no. were involved in the. Were Extremely involved. creative people. And, uh, <laughs> another good name would be uh, Claudia Lanier. Stellar Gypsy. She's recorded a lot with the um, with Stones. Uh, oh, God. He just passed away not too long ago. Um, Rodney Dangerfield? I don't know. No, 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 no. It was no, a long no. time ago. Uh, yeah. David, yeah. David Bowie. He, oh, she, David she, Bowie. She recorded with David Bowie. Um, Wait, was yeah. she the same chick that sang on um, that Stones song? The... Uh, where you hear faintly in the background somebody go, yeah. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that, that's, Wasn't that's that the one. Uh, um, give Me Shelter? Yeah, Give Me Shelter. Yeah. Yeah. She was on the, okay, so that was that chick. 
badass yeah. recording. She yeah. phenomenal <laughs> singer, without a doubt. But anyways, oh, yeah. the liner notes for the Mad Dog is an Englishman here. It goes, March 11th, 1970, Joe Cocker flies into Los Angeles with the intentions of recuperating from grueling months on the road and forming a new band to perform with during the coming summer. March 12th, 1970, D'Anthony of Banana Management, flies into Los Angeles, bearing the tidings that a seven-week Joe Cocker tour to begin eight days later in Detroit has been negotiated and advises Joe that the Musicians Union Immigration Authorities, a hell of a mouthful right there, <laughs> and promoters involved should be mildly chagrined to the point of barring him from performing in America henceforth. So basically, if he didn't put the tour on, you know... Like, don't come back. This mighty, <laughs> yeah. you know, musicians, union, immigration authorities and promoters were going to ban him from America. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> if you don't play over here, we're not letting you in again. Yeah, which kind of <laughs> sucks. Dude, like, considering take our money, you asshole. Yeah. very American, I yeah. guess. Very American. Very American. Very American. But uh, yeah. March 13th, 1970. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo. March 13th. So we're, we're three days in right now. Leon Russell, hearing of Joe's plight, offers his services, informing and playing on, in a band for Joe to take with him on his tour. So great in his prowess on the telephone that by days in ten musicians have been assembled and rehearsals begin. Wow, so that's this unheard is, of. Man. This is like. yeah, <laughs> two days after Joe's informed that he's going to be putting on a tour or leave America forever. <laughs> there's a band for him, ten musicians. It's like he likes America <laughs> altogether. I mean, do we even he know maybe money. twenty musicians <laughs> <laughs> like I'm in Fredericksburg? Like, <laughs> nah, <laughs> no I mean, way. all of us together, I think might be able to put a band together in that quickly. But I mean. Trying uh, to leaving uh, our jobs and uh, yeah yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like we got Kyle over here, the silver tongue devil that he is, talking to everybody. Hey man, uh, if the price is right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's the sad thing that comes up. Nobody yeah. wants to do just for shits and giggles anymore. Yeah. Uh, March fourteenth, nineteen seventy. Some three hundred people turn out to watch the new band, while which now includes eleven singers as well as ten players. That's crazy. <laughs> I don't even think we could put that. And that that's a in. circus, man. How many, yeah. how many days was that? How I many mean, days look in? At the this side is, of the this record. This is like four days. I know. <laughs> Three? Is, that's uh, what gave you that. Four. four. <laughs> so all together. Like from, uh, what's, that, what's that record? Uh, uh, Sergeant Pepper. You know, yeah. You look at the, the album mm. art inside, all the group of people, and those are actual people that are involved yeah. in the music. It's not just a you know a bunch of ridiculous Beatles like, hey, let's put this person here and this person yeah. here. Art. The hodgepodge yeah, of uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. musicians on Sergeant Pepper. I'm Peppers. sorry to cut you off, man. I oh, just, no, no, you're good. You're good. <laughs> it's like, you know. Four it, days in, though. So from March 11th, he That's gets crazy. notified. Three days later, there's, what, now 21 people involved in this band. <laughs> And starting rehearsals. They all love the I have money and pot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> for the band. I'm in. <laughs> and it comes flooding into his house. Yeah, That's so cool, like man. March 14th, they were rehearsed for 12 hours straight. Damn. Now, we all would love to do that. I just have I the time to drop everything. <laughs> yeah, we, we would need two days. Everybody would need the same two days off in a row. <laughs> yeah, so no, get this. It's like March 14th, March 15th, March 16th, all, all 1970. You know, you got... 12 hours, March 14th. You have 12 hours, March 15th, and a private airplane is hired. Ooh. March 16th, another 11-hour rehearsal. <laughs> it's like, these guys, the, the drugs have to be involved. It's, like, it's, it's like a musician's <laughs> paradise, <laughs> yeah. if you imagine. It's like yeah. every musician <laughs> dreams of having that experience. Between. Like, wait, we can rehearse for 11 hours? Like, yeah. let's do this. Let's oh, do yeah. This. Hey, let's take an hour break. Yeah, right. We're not eating lunch either. Yeah, I can right. tell you, unless you're Smoke talking break. mushrooms. So March, yeah. March 17th, 1970, yet another marathon rehearsal is staged. This one recorded in its entirety with the letter and Space Captain, the uh, singles resulting. Uh, the entourage, henceforth known as Mad Dogs and Englishmen, now numbers 36, That's including the musicians, crazy. three sound men, Two secretaries, three roadies, managers, wives, lovers, assorted children, and other yes. animals. <laughs> so it's like they went on this tour and they brought the whole wham damn family with them, no matter what it was. It's like, oh, look, that oh, ant, it needs to yeah. come with us. <laughs> what I don't, yeah, there is a DVD out of all of that. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. awesome. I, I got to see it. it. Yeah, and really? it's awesome. Yeah, it's like that's how I got introduced because Ian was talking about it. And I was like, oh, yeah, it's not that great, huh? And, and he was like, oh, actually, let's uh, watch this little DVD yeah, here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, I, I mean, was like, It's, it's Damn. a cool time period because, you know, you're talking about uh, this was Black Sabbath love. and Paranoid and stuff like that, the ending of, you know, the whole free love and, you know, yeah. love and peace era. And it's like you watch the actual Joe Cocker and Mad Dogs and Englishmen tour DVD 
or VHS, wherever you are, YouTube, it, it, YouTube <laughs> or that, it it's, shows another side of that 1970 time period where it's like there's actually still some good-hearted stuff going on where yeah. it's not all hate and destruction or anything like that. Not saying yeah. that Paranoia is not a phenomenal album. It is. It's just that... This is like the other side of 1970. Where yeah. it's like there are still those leftover um, remnants of people who, you know, still wholeheartedly believe in good vibes and stuff like that. Yeah, good vibes, good bud, good buzz. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everybody's getting along, having a great time. It's a phenomenal DVD, and I recommend it to anybody. But um, awesome. one thing I think is crazy that you just said is they only had three fucking roadies for all those music. Yeah, right? <laughs> How the fuck? Like, they must have been the greatest fucking roadies. Drugs but think, think, think about it this way. <laughs> <laughs> think, think about it this way, though. It's like, it was also a time when musicians actually worked for themselves. I mean, yeah, it was a right. time when musicians would actually help out as well. So right. I mean, they like, weren't pompous assholes. Yeah, now, we're, now we're all into that <laughs> stage. Depends on where... what band we're talking about, but these guys seem like they were Absolutely. pretty nice. Yeah. 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 Those three guys had to be dedicated as fuck, though. Absolutely. Jesus right. Christ. <laughs> Um, let's see here. March 18th, 1970. So we're now seven days after being notified that bad crap is going to happen. It says, someone proposes that the whole tour be filmed. Another bigger airplane is ordered to accommodate the five-man film crew supplemented entourage, which now numbers 43. <laughs> so seven days, we're growing. We've already got deals to record it, to film it. You know, Damn. It, it's insane. Uh, March 19th, 1970, these 43 crowd into the new Super Constellation and wing to Detroit, where their first live performance occurs the next day. Then obviously March 27th and 28th, when this album is recorded, four appearances later, Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs, and Englishman arrive at the Fillmore East, where this album was recorded in its entirety. And that's the story. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's... Absolutely. I mean, I was it Chris and I read this the first time we read it because I didn't even read it the first time that I got it. I was just more interested in like listening to the music because right. it all has stuff that I've heard before and want to hear it over and over and over again. So it's like when we're reading this, we're going like, "Holy shit!" Like an entire tour was planned in seven days, eight days, if that. Yeah, I mean, was like, dude, it's like I, we, we've tried to do bands before. It's like we can't, like, <laughs> I can't keep a band project Dif going. Different, for that different long. time like, to try to coordinate things where it's like you yeah. know, and like, whatever mo monetary issues that you know crap happens, whatever. Yeah. But I mean, here the the list of songs within the album. We got uh, the introduction, obviously, uh, "Honky Tonk Woman," which is a Rolling Stones cover. Um, some more introductions, Sticks and Stones, Cry Me a River, which is another cover. Obviously, Joe Cocker known for doing his covers oh, yeah. of famous songs. Cry That's Me a River. That's a great job, too. Oh, yeah. 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 phenomenal yeah. job. I mean, the solo. There's a lot of people that can like, is yeah. there. just take a Beatles song and make it their own. <laughs> you know, like yeah. Joe Cocker did that. Yeah, he was like the guy times. who would cover songs and more people would know his cover than the actual yeah. More yeah. Times than just one I, I, either, yeah. Yeah. Seriously, I've yeah. known more Joe Cocker covers of originals <laughs> than anything else, which, I mean, <laughs> give yeah. the man credit. Right. Absolutely. Yeah, the first first time I remember r recognizing Joe Cocker was Cody way back in the day. He was you were driving me from the Spotsylvania Mall, uh -huh. and you were playing it on your seat. I think Kyle was in the passenger seat because I remember I was in the back seat. <laughs> but you're like, you ever listen to? I couldn't remember the name, uh -huh. but it was that. Uh, what would you do oh, if yeah. I sang? How did you? And I was like, hey, this is like the Wonder Years, man. <laughs> yeah, that's the first time that I yeah. heard Joe Cocker was Wonder Years, you know, yep. theme then, song right yeah. off the bat. Funny thing is, later. that's not even Joe Cocker on the, the theme song. Because I went back recently when I had Netflix and I started watching Wonder Years. And it was just some shitty cover of Joe Cocker. It wasn't the Joe Cocker. <laughs> it's oh, a wow. cover of a cover. But, uh, yeah, it's a cover of a cover. Our ears are so set on <laughs> Joe Cocker that that's the first thing that comes into our head. Yeah. When you hear right. it, even, you know, I mean, yeah. anybody just, can try and imitate anybody. But, but yeah. that's another but example yeah. of, like, it wasn't even Joe Cocker. And then we heard that and automatically thought it was Joe Cocker. We didn't think, that was the Beatles. No, that's Joe Cocker. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Nice try, Beatles. <laughs> we know who really and, does and that. Yeah. The irony is, is the uh, album art on the inside, if you ever get a chance to check out the album art on the inside, it has that Beatles-esque yeah. uh, Sergeant Pepper, you know, front yeah. cover kind inside of the record. Yeah, it, yeah. It is, it's really cool about uh, As yeah. You Were In. It's, <laughs> like, it's like half, half English charm, half 
like Tom Tom Club. <laughs> See how it's kind of drawn? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just the cover, though, but it's totally badass and totally fitting for the cock. Uh, the cock. I'm just going to call him the cock. That's like the best <laughs> name ever. That's, that's compliments of Kyle. Yeah, the cock. Yeah. Well, well what was that know. thing we said? Come for the tunes, stay for the cock. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Anyways, continuing on with you know the set list and everything like that. Uh, we sto- s- stopped with Honky Tonk Woman, so we got a song in. Uh, <laughs> Sticks and Stones, Cry Me a River, Bird on the Wire, Feeling All Right, Superstar, Let's Go Get Stoned. Um, that's the end of side two. Side three is a blues medley. I'll drown in my own tears when something is wrong with my baby. I've been lo- loving you too long. Girl from the North Country, give peace a chance. That's side three. Side four is she came in through the bathroom window. All know is a Beatles cover. Beatles. Space Captain, The Letter, and Delta Lady, which Delta Lady is also another phenomenon. That's phenomenal song is, one. Yeah, I love that song. Leon Russell, man. Yeah. He like the man plays everything. He plays piano phenomenally. He plays guitar. Oh, you know, yeah. And that's I believe or I in my own opinion think that, you know, one of his better songs yet or ever, Delta Lady. Oh yeah. First time I heard that, I was working in a burger shop, and I had never heard it before. And I was like, is this Joe Cocker? This song is badass. Man. Yeah. But I forgot the name of it for, like, the longest time. Yeah. Just kind of forgot about it. But, yeah, it's a great song. I don't think I've heard it. Seriously. Yeah. You I'm the, I'm the most it's musically good, deprived out of everybody. <laughs> everybody else knows all the great songs. You're killing me. You've I had just to have heard it at least once at my apartment not I've, too long ago. I, yeah. Cody let me borrow the record. I mean, I've pro- then I probably heard it. If it was had. during the apartment era, <laughs> yeah, I probably heard, heard it because yeah. <laughs> I was there all the damn time. Yeah. <laughs> now, I got one question is how many of those songs did they just write from scratch when they got together oh, in God. the studio? I mean, I don't know because, I mean, or what did it, what did it say here? The letter and Space Captain, no, those are all covers. Or Space Captain, I believe, was uh, Leon Russell. I wish I knew for certain. I mean, honestly, I really don't know. Yeah, like a lot of those songs were really cover songs, anyways. Most and, of them and are. Some, of, some yeah. of them are actually not even Joe Cocker's. They're uh, people um, that were involved in. Yeah, yeah. In I mean, that, you so, look at I mean, Leon Russell, and you know, most of his songs though were made popular by Joe Cocker because mm-hmm. I mean, you listen to the Joe Cocker cover version of a Leon Russell song. It's like you don't even think of Leon Russell. You right. think Joe Cocker when you first hear it. But when you go to listen to the original Leon Russell one, it's com- so completely different. I mean, it has their similitudes. But, I mean, if you really dive in, it's like you'll listen to the Leon Russell version, and you're like, the vocals aren't there. Where is that scream? Where is that English yell? <laughs> right. You know, yeah, where, where, the convulsions. Where, where, where's the nut doing the convulsions on the stage? You know, you want that Joe Cockerness, and that's what makes him great. It's, Looks like he's suffering from a peanut allergy while trying yeah. to open wine. He's he's the master of covers. Like, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't know of too many artists that could pull off with his style of covering a song. So I'd love to be able Jim to. Jim Belushi. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like I, I'd love to be able to do that myself, but it's like right. some people have that talent, that natural talent, just to, to yeah. morph a song into making it their own, completely their own, right. other than you know keeping subtle hints. But yeah, that's that's Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishman. That's the live album. Joe Cocker, he will be missed. The cock. Great yeah. artist. Rest in peace. In the great. Vagina in the sky. Because he's the cock. <laughs> yeah, he's in that band now. I feel yeah, like he's in the heaven band. He's probably the most band. badass band in the world. There's a song <laughs> actually written um, about people that have passed away. And it sucks that I'm, I'm mentioning it. I can't think of the name right now offhand, but uh, who wrote it. But uh, it's about that band in the sky. And they mention, uh, you know, two Jims. They mention Jim Morrison and Jim Croce. I uh-huh. forgot the name of the, the song, though, but it's it's yeah. really good. I'll look it up afterwards and bring Sounds it on the next awesome. podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, that or like we can just add a new segment. It's like, what would your uh, deceased super group be? Well, super song, group of zombies. Is, it's a 70s song. It was a pop song, but it was it was definitely good. And uh, and just thinking about that, like uh, I can't even think of the words right now. I'm not even going to try. So yeah, we should, we should uh, time travel on over here to the... 
What is so it? What, 1973? Yeah, so that's a big time jump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> damn, damn, damn. Two years later, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Go into the future. The record was, um, the record was recorded at Abbey Road Studios. I'll say it again. Abbey Road Studios in London. Really? Is that famous? 72 <laughs> to January of 1973. The record, as a lot of people will know, and probably everyone knows more about it than me, but I'm going to uh, talk about it. It's Dark Side of the Moon. And, right on. Uh, it's, Tell uh, me a story, Kyle. It's, yeah, there's a lot. Uh, I, can, I can talk about this record and Pink Floyd, rather, for forever and bore you into a, a sleep state. And then um, and that's what we're and about to do. Hypnotize <laughs> you to do what, what I want you to do. Can, <laughs> I, can, I, can <laughs> I get my pillow first? Yeah, <laughs> let's do so, this, man. Uh, let's put you all to sleep. Let's dive into roll. the dark side. The record was, um, the record was recorded uh, during a time where they were, um, they were kind of going along with, um, they, they had already been recording uh, albums, uh, and they were pumping them out um, in the 70s. Uh, they recorded Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Or, excuse me, uh, they recorded Adam Hart Mother in 1970. They recorded uh, another album by the name of Obscured by Clouds. And um, and then they jumped into um, Dark Side of the Moon. And uh, Dark Side of the Moon was um, was engineered by Alan Parsons, who also recorded Abbey Road by the Beatles. Yeah. Who just died recently, if I'm not We correct. had to double check that one because really? Chris was feeding me information that he didn't really know about. What's up? Alan Parsons. Alan Parsons, yeah. Yeah, when we had, we actually looked that up, that's that's pretty bitching. Yeah. yeah. That man's worked on some stuff. And yeah. that's, yeah. His, his whole idea of, you know, meshing songs together uh, was definitely his, his, uh, his like signature, his mark. And yeah. He definitely, it definitely fucking worked because neither Dark Side of the Moon or Abbey Road can I listen to one song. Yeah, right. that shit's like potato chips. And like I feel like I feel like he, bag, I yeah. feel like he did that on um, on purpose. Now that Nor can you skip around on it. Like, yeah, you have to listen to it back to back to back. Mm-hmm. A lot of people get the uh, notion that um, producing uh, requires engineering, and um, and in some ways it does, but most of the time production, especially back in the seventies, was mainly they were paid for you know, the, the studio time, they paid for everything. The engineer d- does the production work and that's what, you know, in modern day music that an engineer is actually a producer. So uh that's an opinion, I guess. But anyways, um, Dark Side of the Moon. I won't say anything. That's fine. <laughs> Rock on. You just did. <laughs> <laughs> Ian, Ian is actually our home uh, engineer, sound engineer for putting on the whole podcast. Sorry to break it. I apologize if we all sound yeah. like crap later on when I'm editing. <laughs> but hey, we're, we're, doing, we're doing this in the kitchen at the spur of the moment, and it's awesome because No, man, this we is the it. home studio. <laughs> yes, the, the home studio that the, costs millions of dollars because we're all bastard, super rich, right? right on kitchen Hollywood studio. Boulevard. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but guess what? This. Dark Side of the Moon. Well, the uh, the record is the first of its own to actually have the lyrics inside of the the vinyl, like inside of the uh, inside of the cover. So like when Ooh. you open it, uh, you can read along the lyrics to the music. It was the first first time it's ever been done. Um, it was also uh, the album art is by uh, Hypnosis, who has done multitudes. Like I mean, different. Different artists uh, from Led Zeppelin to Nirvana to Black Sabbath <laughs> to, uh, right to uh, you know just about any any band that you can think of ACDC. I mean, they've done uh, they've done a lot of album art. Um, interestingly enough, uh, within the album, I looked I looked this album up. I know so much about it, and I really don't want to bore you guys with uh, a lot of stuff that is repetitive that you know about. Because, cool stuff. But um, Let it go. inform an us. An please. interesting yeah. thing that I looked up online um, when I was asked to do this podcast and be part of this. Um, I, I uh, looked some stuff online, and uh, of course, Wikipedia, everybody's friendly uh, encyclopedia, um, had the list of songs and had you know, the name of the songs and, and then um, next to it, you know, who played what and the vocalists. And um, the interesting thing is that uh, Any Color You Like, which is Gilmore Mason Wright, even though it's still a Waters tune because the, the, whole, the whole album's uh, themed in the same key, so j- just about the same key, most of the songs, and that's how it's so easy to mold them all together. But David Gilmore does an interesting thing. And that is, if you're not familiar with David Gilmore, the uh, 
the good sounding singer in the band. <laughs> <laughs> not knocking waters but i i rather listen to him uh, over waters any day but um he plays his solos and also uh vocalizes the notes on the fretboard and he does it mm -hmm. uh in this song any yeah. color you like and when i was looking at this list on wikipedia it says instrumental in the vocal section which i thought was interesting because if you uh if you listen to the song um Great gig in the sky. Um, the vocals are Claire Tory, and she's a small little white woman. I believe she's actually uh, she sounds like a black woman, you know, soulful black lady. Oh yeah, great gig in the sky. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. And all she's doing is la di da 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 boom boom bop. You know, that's yeah. you know that's about all she's really doing. She isn't singing any she's words. She's scatting. But yeah. you know, but so is Gilmore. Yeah. Really and and I thought that was just interesting. Now you know we're looking at a page that is you know all sorts of information about the album and i mean like i said everybody knows everything about it i mean the first time i heard it um it was so amazing that i listened to it over and over and over again it was um it was one of those albums that i just i could not i could not turn away i've listened i've, I've yeah. had it i've had it i bought it many times on cd i've had mm -hmm. two records I've, uh, I've had it on tape <laughs> you know I've, I've had it in many places it's probably <laughs> the one album that everybody here sitting at the table has yeah, yeah. and people outside Most of the table one. yeah, yeah. Like everybody Absolutely. i know well the album itself it. was on the uh the top 40 uh for 741 weeks, yeah. Damn. which is a long time, <laughs> the longest known time for a record to be on that. So, I mean, at least that, it was Pink Floyd to get that spot, not fucking Nicki Minaj. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, really, what we're talking about now is, is pretty much the death of something, you know, it, like records, buying records and albums and music. It's it's a it's a dying uh, art. You know, it doesn't it really happen anymore. I but, mean, uh, hipsters still collect finals so they're keeping it going well, yeah, but I'm yeah. talking about how, how many of us have been classified as hipsters artists yeah. probably all of us yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> the weak link in that is i've been doing this my entire fucking life exactly. yeah I, i've always been a loser but see, that's, <laughs> yeah. that's but like, see, that's i'm not the cool main for it either it's <laughs> like, it's like, we've all been doing this our entire life we've all been collecting we've all been listening to music and you know diving deep into the musical world and you know, to be classified as something like that kind of sucks sometimes. It I take it fucked I up. Really, I really do like, take it personally. I do it's too, like, man. I am not. I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't get super pissed about because it's like, oh, wait, you think I'm trending? It's like, stones. cool. But it's like, at the same time, there are people out there giving a bad name to it just because they feel, uh, you know, higher value for certain yeah. reasons. I don't get it. But yeah. anyway. Getting, getting back to the album, you know, it's like we all know the iconic cover. You know, yes. if you can flip oh, yes. that back the over prism. Yeah, the, the prism and stuff like that. It's like we all know that iconic co cover. But what I didn't notice was that on the inside, I, I don't know mm -hmm. if it, to anybody else, but I mean, does it look like a heartbeat? Monitor? That is yeah. actually That's exactly what, what it's it supposed to be. Ha! A rainbow heartbeat. <laughs> all right, cool. Is, then uh, I wasn't freaking well, out there the beginning. For a speak it's to sick. me. And this is another interesting fact that uh, not a lot of people know unless you are a crazy freak like me and looked it up <laughs> for you know a good eight years of your life but uh speak to me was actually um the heartbeat at the very beginning and the heartbeat is also at the very end of eclipse okay and, um, and that's the that's the whole idea behind the heartbeat but it says that it was nick mason's only thing that he actually did i mean however he did <laughs> listen to my heart <laughs> I mean, he's, also, that's the music. he's also credited for the album on the album as a, a co-writer of any color you like but um Speak to me was actually Roger Waters, and it was his gift to Nick Mason. <laughs> that a lot is of people, awesome. Uh, you can look it up. Uh, I, I know what I'm talking about. I had I had a book that said that, and uh, and it and it starts off. Uh, I've been mad for fucking years, you know, blah yeah. blah blah blah. And it's um it's a, a bunch of um and and throughout the whole song, you hear a lot of people say things like uh, and money. Oh yeah, he was really cruising for bruising. A lot of these were uh, interviews. They were asking like mm -hmm. as if. Roger Waters, or uh, which I believe it was him, asking questions and receiving them, yeah, like we're doing here. Talking oh, I, I was right. a little drunk at the time. Yeah. So, yeah. so for her, for those yeah. of us who don't know, who is Nick Mason? Nick Mason is the drummer. Okay. And the only member of the band who stayed with the whole band, <laughs> the whole time from, <laughs> from the beginning. He is Pink Floyd. Oh, <laughs> well, that's the funny thing. Yeah, he is Damn. Pink, which is funny because you know Roger <laughs> Waters is the one. You know they go. Which one's pink, you know, is the joke uh, that yeah. was asked of them back when they first came to the States and yeah. started getting some really cool record deals over here. It's like, which one of you's pink? And they, they laughed about it. And then later on in another record, uh, <laughs> Wish You Were Here, on, uh, uh, which is another album to talk about, I guess. But I'll, I'll just say this. Uh, 
uh, the song uh, Have a Cigar, which one's pink, was the joke because Pink yeah. Floyd is actually Pink Anderson and Floyd Council, two old bluesmen, two old black oh, guys yeah. from back yeah. in the day that they Put meshed. Together. It was Sid Barrett's favorite uh so that's that's yeah. another I guess interesting fact. A lot of cool facts I know about this, but I just I really enjoy the album. I don't really want to go through the list of songs because really, it's the album itself. Yeah, that stands alone. Absolutely. Uh, the, the song, like Chris said earlier, it's like the all the songs kind of bleed into each other. So it's like uh, you can't listen to you just can't one. Just listen to one. Of it's them. the album it's, all together. Yeah, that yeah is, it's, it's, a, it's a piece. A you you yeah. put it on and you leave it. Yeah. It's like a Kubrick kind of film on vinyl. Like, that's <laughs> yeah. what it's, like. like that. it's a good it's way to put it. Oh yeah. my! The, I tell you, look, put, just put this album on if you've never listened to Dark Side of the Moon, which I highly doubt you haven't. <laughs> but if you have, you're if really you missing out. Yeah. yeah, it just yeah. sucks listening to uh, to it on the radio. You know, you listen to that's all You listen to many songs. The overplay. That, that are that mm-hmm. are just great yep. vinyl records. You listen to them, and and each song has a, a stop point, an ending point, and a lot of the time, with with Dark Side of the Moon, it doesn't stop, so they cut it off, and it's like, man, this sucks, you know. That, you have to wait that abrupt end, and, and you're just waiting. It's like, no, there's so much more. They're just getting <laughs> to the good part. <laughs> well, no, what they do is they fade it out, or they'll just like they'll just cut it right there. Boom, that's yep. it. You know, they'll bring it in with a meh. <laughs> 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 man that's yeah. it's such a badass album it's yeah. like if you haven't heard it definitely like you have to sit down let's do it at least it's, once yeah, the whole way through you one know time. it's like yeah the one whole time. fucking way dude that that like epitomized high school for me with uh with joe it's like just so much time we spent sitting there listening right. to floyd because it's it's you're living in suburbia what else is there to do besides chill with your friends and listen to music really awesome music at that and get into your own little culture your own little world who is joe huh who is joe joe hart joe hart joe hart joe 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 on fire yeah, yeah. <laughs> joe, joe, joe's a legend in his own right maybe one day he'll be on the show too we don't know i was thinking about floyd head i mean he would yeah, definitely absolutely have a few, uh, few uh, things to say about this oh, yeah. nice. but, one thing know, about dark side i would like to just mention is the home. dark side of oz that yes some people might not know about i do but, not uh, rap on never brother. Heard that. Story. Oh, okay <laughs> okay well dark side of oz is pretty much listening to dark side three times along with uh the wizard of oz I have okay, synced yeah. Up. Synced up, yeah. I have done. You put that. the wizard yeah, on and you. Great. We Roger did that Waters back says in. says it's rubbish. We did it back in college, <laughs> and it was actually yeah. one of the coolest experiences. Well, ever. Well, see, that's the thing with Pink Floyd too is you can put on any of their music and look at the wind fucking blowing. Yeah. Yeah. It yes. will match uh-huh. it beautifully. Like yeah. uh, also on that, mm-hmm. um, I think I saw a version of that where if you watch The Exorcist and play the first Black Sabbath album, Black Sabbath. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? It, that like, sounds it awesome. <laughs> yeah, I was like, you know, just uh, turn the lights off and pop right. that bitch on. See, <laughs> yeah. see if it see musters that shit any crazy you. spirits. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. See if you shit yourself or you can't sleep at night or both. That's pretty cool. Give order. me nightmares. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do is give me nightmares. Hey, I, I'd suggest at least trying it. I, we did try Dark Side of Oz. Yeah. Like, you were over. This was when we had the rec room. Uh, the rec room was We used thing. to do that shit all the time. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I actually got to witness that once, and I was like, whoa. Because when uh, um, David Gilmore's like, black, black, black. And then mm-hmm. the, that's when the witch shows up for yeah. the first time. And he goes, and blue. And the camera immediately goes to Dorothy. And it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> it's like, oh my God, it's synced. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Like, it doesn't have to be synced perfectly, but if it is, like, if you have the actual DVD cut oh, they made so of it, good, it's perfect, man. Yeah, like, it it's crazy how good it, like, when he says bullshit and money and the line is like, bullshit, thrown up his face, <laughs> <laughs> like, Not it's magical, though. man. Not to get off topic, but the, uh, the biggest thing about the, uh, the record art, the album art, a lot of people say it's the prism, and you look at the prism and it's just your typical prism, but when you look at the back of it, the back of it is what really... Sorry, <laughs> I'm not I'm not uh, accustomed to uh, talking on these uh, podcast shows. But uh, what I was saying is, is that the um, the the really cool thing about this album art is the back of the album. If you notice, the prism is it's getting the light, but it's not it's not going out. It's uh, it kind of just stops. The light doesn't go through, and and then it's it was actually a mess up that the band actually really really loved. The, the the rainbow actually is 
not coming out of the prism. It's going to the prism, like the light mm. is going to the prism. So it's, it's, uh, it doesn't make any sense at all, but it's really, really cool. And <laughs> it was something that the band was very excited about. They actually wanted it as the front cover, but had to settle, you know, settle with both sides. And actually, um, I've actually taken out a CD booklet and they connect like the, the front and back connect. So I thought that was kind of nice. cool. Yeah, and with the prism, that also ties in with Dark Side of Oz because you'll see it's a white beam going into the triangle, and then once it hits the prism, it turns into color, just <laughs> like the tornado. <laughs> it's right. Like that, that triangle is representing Hey-o. the tornado from black and white to color. <laughs> and then if you look on the back, it's actually backwards <laughs> if you don't look at it upside down because then it goes from color to black and white, just like at the end. This this is turning into a conspiracy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, we've stayed on topic. <laughs> don't talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> don't believe your teachers. Don't I believe them. <laughs> so, Kill cool. your heroes. I don't know. It's, it's it's a fun it's a fun album. Um, the art, <laughs> the uh, and and really, uh, Pink Floyd's a fun band to talk about, but they're also kind of boring me now. Like so, it's. Let's just talk about music. <laughs> <laughs> it's not boring at all, bro. I'm always happy to hear uh, Kyle talk about Pink Floyd. I'm also always excited to hear Cody talk about Jimi Hendrix because your brain is pulsating with knowledge on <laughs> just like his on Pink Floyd. Dude, if I... And Ian uh, is definitely my go-to for oh any music whatsoever, <laughs> ever, because Ian's just all around like, oh, I like that, I like this, I like that, I like that. I like old stuff, I like new stuff. He's I like, think oh, the, that, uh, I think the producer is trying to say that uh, we're up to one hour. We're we're reaching we're, one hour. We're a one hour. It's pretty uh, badass. You know, well, you know, this is the thing. We're gonna have to edit out a little bit of stuff. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Right. I mean, we're, we're gonna I'm, edit I'm, out some can stuff. Can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for making my job difficult, guys. No. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Yeah, some titties. <laughs> Always happy to do it. Yeah, I so believe in a thing, Carlo. We're reaching an hour. Are we? Uh, let's. Are we past the hour yet, or we got some? We've got like a few minutes here and there. Okay. So. Do we want to? Do we want to cut it off, or just talk a little bit more about? I stuff? mean, we can do an outro. An outro. All right. <laughs> so. so I guess that's it for our first episode of Pure Finds. Uh, first, we had. Wilson Pickett. The Wicked Pickett. The we wicked talked about picket. Wicked, wicked Pickett. The Wicked Pickett. Wilson Pickett. Uh, Joe Cocker, Mad Dogs and Englishmen. We also talked about pa- Black Sabbath Paranoid and Dark Side of the Moon with Pink Floyd. And we are not going to discuss them again. <laughs> ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> no, we will Thank again, you. maybe, if, if it comes up in fun conversation. Passing, we'll have some callbacks. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> but I definitely want to uh, mention to everybody listening that if you have any uh, great ideas for maybe a segment that you would like us to hear, any albums that you think are really badass that maybe we didn't even friggin' mention this podcast... Just uh, you know, drop us a, a suggestion uh, on Facebook. We will be forced to listen to them. Yeah, it's like, and we we'll we'll listen. We'll take suggestions definitely. Uh, if or just tell any, us how much we suck, you know. <laughs> yeah, and just be like, you're gay. <laughs> you know, whatever. Leave us know? some comments. Let us know what you guys think, and you know, we'll take it from there. Yeah, we'll do this all together. You know, we'll hold your hand as you follow us down this nice uh, country path of good fucking music. Um, I would suggest uh, also with that, if we gotten any any facts wrong that you know for a fact that we messed up on, you know, dates, anything like that, just drop them by so we can correct it next episode and have a good old time with that. Yeah, and just don't tar and feather us or stone us. Please. Or We're never wrong, though, so uh, good luck. <laughs> yeah, right? It's like I'm never wrong. I'm you part woman. My, <laughs> my mom was a woman. <laughs> We're I not the encyclopedia of music. We are fans absolutely down to the core. We are musicians who love music and, and fans of if music. You, if you know a fact that we might have gotten wrong, we'll gladly take that because we want to get down to the brass tech truth. Um, we don't want to live lies here. Yeah, don't want to live lies. Don't want to spread them either because it's always bad. <laughs> Definitely drop by uh, some of our Facebooks again. I'm your host, Chris Morrison, with... I'm Ian Gebhardt. I'm Cody Jewell. I'm Kyle Bittner. And we are Pure Finds. Have a good night. <laughs>